Jesus died so we might live. Amen. The text will serve as the base of our message is a portion of our Old Testament reading from the prophet Jeremiah chapter 15. We're going to focus in on verses 16 and 17. Dear friends in Christ, do you remember this story from two years ago? It involves a teenager in the United Kingdom who went deaf and blind because of his junk food diet. Here's a portion of the article from Fox News. The case involves a teen, believed to be UK's first such case, who slowly lost his eyesight and hearing after eating nothing but fries, chips, and other kinds of junk food. The then 14-year-old boy, described as a fussy eater, complained of experiencing tiredness to his family doctor. By the age of 15, however, his hearing and vision became impaired, and at age 17, he was declared legally blind. The teen was eventually diagnosed with nutritional optic neuropathy, a result of nutritional deficiency. The boy's mother told the Telegraph that the teen's condition devastated his life. He has since dropped out of college, and she has left her job in order to care for him. What a cautionary tale. Many health situations can be linked to our diet. What we put in our mouth has a bearing on one's state of mind and health. What are you feeding yourself spiritually? You are what you eat. If you have been around the Lutheran liturgy for a while, you can recall these words, Blessed Lord, who has caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior Jesus Christ. Inwardly digest the word of God. You see, eating the word is throughout the scriptures. Eating led to death in the Garden of Eden. But eating also led to the promise of life. At the Last Supper, the promise of the New Covenant, there was eating and there was drinking that gives forgiveness of sins and life and salvation. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And in our text, it is the prophet Jeremiah eating the word of our Lord. Your words were found, he writes, and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone, because your hand was upon me. For you had filled me with indignation. What are we going to eat? A feast on the Word of God, or will we open that bag of chips and gorge ourselves on the incessant junk food that is communicated to us daily? Do you ever sit down with a snack while watching television? And before you know it, Half the bag is gone. We just keep shoveling it in without a realization of what we are doing. This happens to us spiritually. We skip the daily devotions. We neglect the hearing and the reading of God's Word. We fill our place with that which cannot satisfy Now listen to this insight from an enlightened author who wrote, Spiritual junk food is comprised of the things we take in. 
that sometimes provide temporary comfort but have little or no spiritual value. And once the moment passes, we feel worse than before. And those things are hidden in entertainment. Many times entertainment serves as a means to distract us from the problems in our lives. Escape reality. Cure boredom. Make us feel better. The content in entertainment is often high in spiritual sugar and salt and fat. Empty calories. Most people don't like to admit that what they watch or read or listen has an effect on their spiritual welfare. To one who is accustomed to eating junk food, healthy food isn't very appealing. The same is true of one who is accustomed to enjoying spiritual junk food. And the result of a spiritual junk food diet is a diseased soul. What should we be putting into our mouths and our minds? God's Word. When hearing the Word of God, what provided you comfort? As you read the Word of God and this Word of grace, how many times has that helped your trembling soul? In marking your Bible, how many times do you come back to those passages that give you a spiritual lift when life has you in the doldrums or the basement? And as you digest the Lord's words, you fill yourself with forgiveness and life and salvation that the Lord died and rose again to provide. And you see, God's Word doesn't always have to be in a formal setting, such as Bible class or Sunday school. Those are wonderful. I love, though, where Scripture says this. Talk about them as you walk along the road. You see, this puts the Word in our daily experiences. It's part of our ongoing Christian walk. What we eat, we share with others. Don't always know what to say? God has a word for that. Know your Bible and see that what you eat flows out of you to those around you. You are what you eat. What will it be? It is the prayer from this pulpit today that you choose the food that lasts forever. As Jesus says, do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. Amen.